why are we here in monochromatic black and white and beautiful color? We are here because the Oppenheimer movie and the Barbie movie are coming out on the same day. We should talk more about this. We should. And we will. Hi, my name is Sean Adams. I am in the History Department at the University of Florida where I teach classes on American capitalism and the global history of energy. Hi, I'm Jillian Hernandez. I am a professor in the Department of Women's Studies where I teach classes on popular culture. All right, so I'm gonna ask you. Oh, so okay. if you were going to a double feature, which would you see first? I would definitely watch Oppenheimer first. It's like doing exercise. <laughs> and then afterwards you get the treat, which is gonna be the Barbie movie. I completely agree. We know there's gonna be some difficult stuff in Oppenheimer. <laughs> right. I would not want that to be yeah. the note that I end my day on. Yeah. The Manhattan Project was an attempt to build an actual working atomic device. Oppenheimer was the director of the Manhattan Project and he was selected uh, because he had this very special blend of scientific knowledge and drive. Barbie is the first adult fashion doll created for girls. She was created in 1959. There was some you know, negative uh, response to Barbie when she first emerged. She was seen as somewhat threatening and a little too much of a woman for girls to play with. But as you know, I think Americans, we love fashion culture, we love beauty culture. That soft power of femininity um, definitely played a role in her popularity. But I'm really curious about why these two movies might be coming out now. Why do you think Oppenheimer's coming out now? You know, I think that part of the reason is we're going through a period in our history that's very similar to what uh, Oppenheimer went through and the idea mm -hmm. that what we've done is kind of unleashed this thing that we can't control. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are saying the same things about AI. So I think that that blend of kind of optimism about AI, but also kind of fear and, 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 and pessimism about AI really captures the way that a lot of Americans felt in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. I suspect that uh, the movie is going to deal with the kind of complicated legacy of that. It's interesting. It's Sounds like this movie, they're going to actually complicate Barbie's story a little more, mm -hmm. right? Give her some complexity mm -hmm. that she hasn't had. Yeah, no, definitely. Barbie is now on the loose in the real world. And so she seems to be symbolizing some kind of disruption. To have her emerge in this moment where we're also facing inflation and where consumption is very much slowing down and not as accessible to everyone. Um, and Barbie is supposed to symbolize, right? Like you can have your Malibu dream house and you can have all the toys, right? right? right. Um, you know, and I think many of us are feeling like very much so we, we probably can't and maybe we never will, right? Yeah. Those are some sort of contemporary threads that um, perhaps might be, might be there, um, but it'll be interesting to see where, where they take it. So we have books uh, from special collections at Smathers Library at UF, and uh, mine is The Atomic Age Opens. It explains uh, a little bit about uh, how fission works, nuclear fission works. So it's meant to be a primer of how to negotiate this new atomic age, uh, written in the 1940s. I have some Barbie books. This one here is called um, Here's Barbie Stories about the fabulous Barbie and her boyfriend, Ken. And so <laughs> I'm actually quite surprised that even in the 60s, it was like, okay, for Barbie to um, have a boyfriend. But what I find really interesting is that the book has, there's like these little journal, pages where girls are being prompted to write their own summer story in another one. Um, they're being prompted to make a list of like who they would want to invite to their like birthday party. This looks like a lot of fun and probably something I would have picked up like a girl at the time for sure. Mine doesn't talk about how to make an atomic bomb. <laughs> That's good. I'm, yeah, which I'm I guess, glad. I guess it's positive. Yes. So growing up, um, if I made the honor roll in elementary school, the deal was that I would get a Barbie. Yeah. And I remember um, following like Bob Mackie and I saw that this Bob Mackie Barbie was coming out. So I asked my mom like, pretty please mom. And uh, we, I did well in school. This is why I'm a nerd here, an academic. And she took me to FAO Schwartz to buy the Bob Mackie doll. And I still have her. She is a prized possession. Um, but for me, she was very much um, a treat that I got for working hard. And that's the good old capitalist, you know, that's right. meritocracy that's right. narrative. You, you delayed gratification, <laughs> right? You got the Barbie. 
I left my Oppenheimer doll at home. <laughs> Oppenheimer Ken. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what right. we need. He had terrible proportions. He was like, uh, he weighed like 110 pounds. He was so light that they uh, rejected him from the army. Oh my goodness. Yeah, when he was becoming an officer. He was too busy thinking. He didn't have time to eat. He was, yeah, thinking and smoking. He smoked oh, a lot. That's so what did him in. It. Yeah, that's what, that's what did him in. That'll do it. I really truly hope that the Barbie movie lets people know that it's okay to play and imagine with with style, with your body. We're all playing. We're all playing all the time. And maybe we should play more. You know, it's it's often said that, well, we need a Manhattan Project for this, right? We need a Manhattan mm -hmm. Project for global warming. We need a Manhattan Project for various problems. I hope that people see that um, that's a difficult task and that, you know, sometimes the solution can be problematic in and of itself. So I think it'll be a movie that folks will kind of come out scratching their chin and, and maybe thinking about, that's not maybe necessarily the recipe for a summer blockbuster. I don't know that people want complexity in the summer, but it's as a historian, it's what I want, so. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna learn more about Oppenheimer, the Manhattan Project, and the Atomic Age, you should definitely enroll in my Global History of Energy class that I teach here at UF. And if you wanna learn more about popular culture and dolls, take one of my classes in the Women's Studies Department. Thank you, Sean. Well, thank you, Jillian. Oh, so this is what it's like in black and white. I feel so vibrant and alive. I hope you can see my makeup. <laughs>